Thank you, Guy, and uh, uh, great work on the committee to uh, continue to hold the committee itself accountable for their job. I mean, it's just bizarre to see this massive drumbeat towards impeachment by Chairman Nadler. Uh, and, and one of the most irresponsible things I've ever seen in Congress last week, you had the chairman of a major committee in Congress say that he hopes to bring articles of impeachment to the floor of the House by the end of this year, and there are absolutely no grounds for impeachment. Uh, that, that the idea that he's got an article of impeachment already drafted up with just blanks waiting to be filled in, and he's on a fishing expedition using his committee, abusing the power of that committee to try to find something. <clears throat> and he stated his objective is to try to impeach the president, even though there still is no basis for impeachment. And they themselves acknowledge that. I asked Majority Leader Hoyer in our colloquy last week, I said, what are the actual articles of impeachment that your chairman hopes to bring to the House floor by the end of this year? And he couldn't name one. And yet he's still allowing the chairman of the committee to meander around and abuse the power of that committee to try to harass and hound the president and friends of the president, uh, former associates of the president, uh, with no basis at all. And then, of course, over the weekend, you saw the New York Times try to do yet another hit piece on Justice Kavanaugh. And before the article was even filed, you had presidential candidates on the Democrat side calling for the impeachment of a sitting Supreme Court justice. And then quickly before the, the article could even, the ink could dry uh, on the pages of the New York Times, you saw uh, them walking it back. Uh, what accountability will be held uh, to the editors who allowed such an irresponsible article to be written? Uh, again, the American people are watching this in disgust, wondering why uh, the Democrats got this majority and are wasting it away. Instead of bringing something really important for the people of this country, the workers of this country, like USMCA, which could be law of the land. We could have over 100,000 new jobs in America with better trade deals with our southern and northern neighbors in Canada and Mexico. That could be law today. But Pelosi won't bring that to the floor because she's spending so much time on impeachment uh, and, and enabling uh, this fantasy that they have uh, that's completely baseless. And so in the meantime, we're going to continue doing our job, promoting alternatives, building a coalition. I had a good meeting last week with my whip team on USMCA to be ready to put the votes together to pass it uh, once it's finally scheduled for a floor vote, if it's finally scheduled. And it ought to be scheduled for a floor vote. Frankly, it ought to be scheduled by the end of this month, and it would pass Congress. And again, America would have better trade relationships with our friends from the North and South, Canada and Mexico, who both want this to happen. American workers would benefit. Uh, agriculture community, our farmers would benefit. And yet, they're all waiting while Pelosi and her most radical left base plays this game of impeachment. Uh, without any basis for impeachment. So we're going to continue to do our job. Uh, in the meantime, as Liz mentioned, uh, her team did a great job of putting on a retreat uh, that included the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, the Secretary of State, and uh, so many uh, such great engagement from our members to focus on issues that are real important to getting this country back on track, addressing real problems that we're facing. Uh, and then in the meantime, we won and swore in two new members last night. It's exciting to see. Uh, both Greg Murphy and Dan Bishop get sworn in as new members of Congress from North Carolina uh, last night. And uh, after they voted, the very first act uh, as members of Congress that they took was to sign the Born Alive Discharge Petition, bringing that count to 203 members of Congress who have signed the discharge petition, only 15 left to go, and that bill will come to the floor and pass uh, if 15 more Democrats sign it. So I want to commend both of them, uh, congratulate them, of course, for getting sworn in, but commend them for signing the discharge petition on Born Alive. And uh, we're going to keep doing our work. Uh, as, as Nancy Pelosi is focused on this bizarre concept of winning campaigns that results in a lost election, uh, I'm not really sure what that means, but uh, I'm more than happy to encourage her to keep focusing on that while we focus on delivering results for families and then ultimately winning this majority back so we can actually do real things with it that matter to families as opposed to wasting it all on this witch hunt impeachment hoax that they continue to go down.